You know, it's an unfortunate reality that when markets and investment markets are performing well, we tend to only focus on the gains and we don't really pay too much attention to our contingency plans until it's really too late and we start to see really bad market volatility or down years like 2022. I've done a couple of videos recently talking about how important it is as you enter this retirement risk zone, the five to 10 years leading into retirement, to start thinking about how you're playing defense or investment defense, understanding investment risks and how they will affect your portfolio, especially when it comes to how much time you have between the point at which you are currently and when you'll retire. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how playing investment defense can help you win the retirement game. Specifically, what is the actual quantifiable benefit of creating a portfolio that limits your downside risk and limits how much time you'll need in order to recover the lost value in your portfolio, which is really the most important element of a pre-retiree's retirement plan, especially if you're within five to 10 years of retiring. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric Amzalog. I'm the owner and head financial planner at Peak Financial Planning. We are fee-only fiduciary financial planners and wealth managers, and we specialize in helping people just like you navigate the retirement risk zone, which is the 10 years prior to retirement and the first five years in retirement. And our goal is to help you get educated, stay informed, and make better decisions with your money so that you can live in peace with your wealth. So this video is in response to an article published by Lance Roberts, who wrote an, um, an article recently trying to demystify or debunk the myth that the 10 best days of the market, if you miss those 10 best days in the market, that your portfolio performance is ruined. He made the case, and I'm going to show his article, and I'm also going to show a Excel model that you can use, and I'll provide the link to the Excel model in the description to this video, that will help illustrate what Lance's point from this article is, which is, first point is that it's actually far more important to miss the 10 words days of the market than it is to get to participate in the 10 best days in the market. And if you watched my last video, you'll understand that one of the ways I think about this is I think what is the mar the investment propaganda we're being given that leads us to make decisions that we don't critically think about. It's not consumer's fault, but we're being bombarded by investment propaganda and it's leading us to make decisions that are not good, such as this idea that we need to participate in the 10 best days of the market. Otherwise, we're going to miss out on most of the performance or most of the gains. And what's happening here is we're given very very little context about when the test 10 best days in the market occur. And that is the driving force behind Lance's article. So I'm going to show a few snippets from his article, and then I'm going to show an Excel model that gives you exact numbers that shows you how can you quantify a defensive portfolio's alpha. Alpha is a term for how much extra rate of return or benefit do you get from your investment strategy compared to alternatives. So you can compare investment strategy one to investment strategy two. So here's Lance's article. And if you want the link to reference it directly and read the whole article, uh, I will put that in the description to this video below. The title here is 10 best days, a meme for every bull market. I'm just gonna talk, I'm gonna go through a few of his key points here. So his first key point here is that the financial media regurgitates this same analysis whenever there is a market correction. If an investor were to simply miss the 10 best days in the market, they would have shed over 50% of their ending portfolio value. The investor would finish with a portfolio of only $30,000 roughly compared to $65,000 if they had just stayed put. And in the article, he's referencing a specific model that was built with a starting dollar amount and an ending dollar amount comparing the scenario where you try to market time and miss the best days of the market by selling at the bottom or selling you know, at random places. The second thing he says here is the best days occurred during bear markets. So here's the problem with the analysis on the prior slide. What about the losing days? While those doing the analysis do mention the losing days, they dismiss the impact. Here is the rest of the story from Statista. So why is the timing the market so hard? Often the best days take place during bear markets. Over the last Last 20 years, seven of the 10 best days happened when the market was in bear market territory. Adding to this, many of the best days take place shortly after the worst days. And if you're reading this or watching this after 2022, you'll remember this. A lot of those high volatility days, we had big down days in the market, and then following day was a huge up day in the market. Even now in 2023, we're still seeing a lot of those same things here in October. Such was the same conclusion by Pippa Stevens in 2022. The firm noted this eye-popping stat while urging investors to avoid panics 
selling, pointing out that the best days generally follow the worst days for stocks. So think about that for a moment. The best days generally follow the worst days. So Lance's point here is avoiding the worst days is a better endeavor. So if the best days occur during the worst periods for the market, does it not become more logical to focus on avoiding those periods? While missing the 10 best days of the market certainly does impair portfolio performance over time, what about missing the 10 worst days? How important is this? So over an investing period of about 40 years, missing the 10 best days would have cost you about 50% of your gains, but successfully avoiding the 10 worst days would have led to two and a half times the gains over a buy and hold strategy. So before I skip ahead, if you watched last video I did on investment risks, you will understand that part of my reason for showing this is we are propagandized to believe that buy and hold will work over long periods of time. That if we just shut it, shut up, take our punches on the chin, don't change our portfolios and just let it ride, that we will have better outcomes. The question we always have to ask ourselves is where else in life would that strategy ever be appropriate? And in my last video, you saw me give some analogies and my answer is nowhere else in our life would we ever accept someone telling us to just take your punches, shut up and take it and hope and pray for the best. So the second question we have to ourselves ask ourselves is who benefits if we are told to believe this propaganda? I'm not doing this video to share an answer, but I'm just sharing those as points to think about when we when we try to challenge beliefs that we hold and repeat without knowing exactly why we hold them. And again, this is not your fault or consumer's fault. We are constantly getting fed media that is propagandizing us to do bad things with our money. I will show one more screen here, which is we can backtest this. And Lance shared this in his perf in his uh, article. So you can see the exact backtesting model he provides. But the idea here is could you get similar or maybe even slightly worse rates of return performance but significantly reduce your drawdown or your max risk on the downside. And Lance is showing here on the screen that he has constructed a portfolio that was back tested that can limit your max drawdown on the worst year possible. And you can see the bottom portfolio versus the top here. You have about half the max drawdown on this top portfolio. And then on the right, you have market correlation, which in investing world, world is called beta. And you can reduce the beta of your portfolio by simply having defensive strategies in place. Now, I'm going to switch screens here and show you guys a math mathematical model that quantifies how much actual benefit do you get if you can miss down days or create a defensive portfolio that limits how much drawdown or maximum risk you take on a bad market downturn. All right, here's the model. And again, I'm going to make this available as a template in the description to this video. So if you want to come in here and plug your own portfolio values in here, put in your own scenarios, you can do that. Everything here um, that we're going to have in the calc in this uh, Excel model is a calculator. So you'll be able to make your own edits. What we're trying to illustrate here is what is the actual difference between a buy and hold strategy and then putting into place a defensive investment strategy? Again, from the perspective of if you're watching this video, you are likely within 10 years of retirement or early on in your retirement. And that phase of life, you cannot afford to lose time. So this is a familiar spreadsheet or familiar model if you watched last week's video. And if you haven't watched last week's video on investment risk, then I highly recommend watching it. You can find a link to it above on the top right here, and you should maybe go back to that and watch it. But here we go. So on the in the in this spreadsheet, we see here, um, if you have a buy and hold strategy and your starting portfolio value is a million dollars, you have a decline of 30%. Your ending portfolio is $700,000. That's a $300,000 loss. Now the required gain in terms of percentages to recover that is 43%. So you don't need to gain 30% because you're actually starting with a lower portfolio value now at the end of that $300,000 loss. So you actually need a 43% gain. And that usually will take using the historic average S&P rate of return 5.23 years. In my prior video, I discussed how you can cha make changes in the model and really understand this linear to logarithmic relationship where on the downside, it's linear, but in order to gain back to break even, you have this logarithmic or exponential much longer time frame and much higher rates of return required because of the change in starting portfolio value. So I'm not going to get into that in this video, but let's say you were to implement a defensive strategy. So in that defensive strategy, you have the same starting portfolio value, but using that defensive strategy, you were able to avoid 10% of that market decline. So instead of a 30% decline, your defensive strategy portfolio participated in a 20% decline, which is right here, what's called a 10% defensive alpha. You have saved yourself 10% of downside risk, and that is called defensive alpha, the difference between what you would have lost had you 
just done the buy and hold, follow the market versus implementing the defensive strategy. You end up here with $200,000 of losses and a portfolio value that's at 800K after that 20% loss. And the required gain to recover is only 25%. This is the second area of what's called defensive alpha. So now because you've saved yourself that 10% downside loss, you now only need to gain 25% to get back to break even instead of 43%. That is a 17.86% defensive alpha. You have saved yourself the need to recover that extra almost 18% by playing defense at the back end. Now, even more importantly is how much time did you save yourself? Because if you're close to retirement and you're in that risk zone, time is what matters. Yes, the money matters, but time is what matters because you can't get time back. So what you actually have here is in the top scenario, you need 5.23 years to recover in that buy and hold, but using the defensive strategy, you only need 3.05 years to recover. And that is a 2.18 years of time saved, right? So 2.18 years of time saved to get back to break even if you use a defensive strategy. And on the green box on the right here, or what we would call total defensive alpha is you have 28% total defensive alpha. You saved yourself 10% downside risk at the beginning by that using that defensive portfolio. And then you've saved yourself 17.86% of extra gain that would be required just to get to break even. The combined total of that is roughly 28%. And you've also more importantly saved yourself 2.2 years getting back to break even. So hopefully this illustrates the power of a defensive strategy and kind of busts that meme that keeps us all blindly following the blind, just staying in the market and saying, I'm just gonna take all the punches. It's okay, it's just punch me, punch me, punch me. It'll be okay later because someone is telling me markets always go up and to the right. So we're gonna wind this video down. If you haven't watched, the prior video on investment risk that shows how to use this model just to understand how long it takes to get recoveries when you lose value in your portfolio, how to compare that in an apples to apples manner and really understand it. I highly recommend going back. These are the two critical components that help make you an educated investor and really understand investment risk so we're not just blindly only focusing on investment rate of return. This allows us to make educated decisions rather than having uncertainty and fear about what the effects of portfolio or market downturns will have on our portfolio. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. The Excel model will be available for you as a template to download and put your own dollar amounts in there and play with this. It's a very simple model, so you can download that using the link in the description. If you have any suggestions for other videos like this, please put them in the comments below and I'm happy to do to make them. As always, thank you for your time and attention. And last but not least, if you do have an interest in um, other video resources like this, I have plenty of those on my YouTube channel at Peak Financial Planning. I've also got tons of written guides and other videos on my website at www.thepeakfp.com. And if you'd like to learn more about working with my fee-only fiduciary financial planning firm and wealth management firm, you can uh, get some more information and even schedule a free consultation with us on our website at www.thepeakfp.com or using the link in the description to this video below. Thanks for your time and attention. See you in the next video.